tax-free savings account, one of the most powerful investment accounts that the government created for Canadians. As the name suggests, it offers tax shelter growth to flexible tax-free withdrawal, making them an attractive choice for many investors. However, it's important that you know the rules, otherwise you'll end up paying more penalties. In this video, we'll examine five case studies of people who didn't use their tax-free saving correctly and how it backfired on them. Welcome back, this is Thomas. Let's quickly spend a minute to recap what tax-free saving account is. One of the most significant benefits of a tax-free saving is, not surprisingly, the tax-free growth of your investments. This means any income, dividends, or capital gain earned within the account are not subject to tax, allowing your investments to grow at a faster rate compared to a taxable account. This tax-free growth can make a substantial difference in your long-term investment returns, particularly as your account balance and your investment horizon increases. A TFSA also allows you to invest in a wide variety of financial instruments, such as stocks, bonds, mutual funds, and many more. This flexibility gives you the freedom to create a well-diversified portfolio that aligns with your financial goals, risk tolerance, and investment performance. Whether you're an experienced investor or just starting out, a tax-free saving can accommodate your investment strategy. And unlike RSP, withdrawals from the tax-free saving are not subject to tax. This means that you can access your fund at any time without incurring additional tax liabilities. This feature makes the tax-free saving attractive options for those who want to save for both short-term and long-term financial goals, such as emergency fund, home down payment, or even retirement. Alright, so it sounds great. What can go wrong? Let's go through five cases that the Canadian actually have to end up paying more taxes and penalties in TFSA. They are taking it to the court to appeal, but most of the time end up losing the battle. For privacy purpose, I will make up the names. As we know, if you're unable to maximize your TFSA contributions in a given year, one of the great benefits is that any unused contribution room can be carried forward indefinitely. This allows you to catch up on your contribution in future years, but that only applies if you are resident in Canada during those years. Jane deposited $63,500 into her tax-free saving back in December 2019, which is the maximum by the way. Neither the bank nor the advisor knew that Jane declared non-residency in Canada for three years. Therefore, the TFSA room is way smaller than $63,500. The CLA sent her an educational letter informing her of the offer contribution, but she did not receive it until July 2021 due to being out of the country during the global pandemic. Upon learning about the offer contributions, Jane immediately withdrew the excess amount. However, the CLA said, hey, it's too late. Jane, you over contributed for two years and we're going to penalize you plus interest. Now, of course, Jane made her appeal, but the CLA denied her request, forces Jane to appeal to the federal court. After going back and forth with the CLA and the court, the judge disagreed with the CLA's reasons for denying Jane's appeal, stating that Jane could not withdraw the offer contribution sooner due to not receiving the letter. Now, at the end, the judge ordered an independent review of the case emphasizing that the Jane might still need to face the same outcome. Now imagine all the time, money, and the brain cell wasted during these three years, and it could be avoided. All right, so let's move on to the second case study. Back in 2011, there was an investment advisor in Vancouver. He helped his client's tax-free saving to grow from $15,000 to over $617,000 in just three years by day trading penny stocks. And when he sold everything in 2013, he nearly made $550,000 on a tax-free basis. While everyone was busy trying to find out the names of advisors and want to hire him to work, CLA immediately slaps a penalty on the tax-free saving. Why? Because the CLA said this is a frequent trading activity. It's like conducting a business and the income generated within the tax-free saving needs subject to the income tax. And the tax bills was around $200,000. Now, of course, the case went to the court. The judge agreed with the CLA, stating that there was no doubt the taxpayer was conducting a day trading business with his tax-free saving based on the trading activity. The Income Tax Act specifies that a tax-free saving is generated exempt from tax on its income with two exceptions. 
that the tax free saving holds non qualified investments or carry on a business, if neither exception applies, the tax free saving must pay tax on its taxable income. So end up, the taxpayer lose the case and have to pay the fine. So in short, avoid frequent trading in a tax free saving. The CRA consider factors such as transaction frequency, holding durations, intention to acquire securities for resale at a profit, the nature and the quantity of the security, and time span of the activity when determining whether gains from the security constitute carrying on a business. Okay, onto the first scenario where Henry tried to buy private company shares in his tax free saving. Henry later was reassessed by the CRA for receiving an advantage from the transfer of the private company shares to his tax free saving. He argued that 100% penalty tax was not right, as you can have a company share in the tax free saving, and he took it to the court. And what's the result? First, Henry lost the case as the court said that the intention for those private company shares is very questionable and thus not eligible to be withheld in the tax free saving for tax advantage. Henry did appeal the decisions to the federal court, which is likely to hear the case in 2023. It's crucial to be aware what you are buying in a tax-free saving account. If it's something not widely accepted, then please triple check with the, all the professional parties. This case involves the information from the CLA My Account sections while trying to determine the tax-free saving contribution limit. Back in January, Mary from British Columbia wants to contribute to her tax free saving, but she forgot how much tax free saving room she has. So she went to the CLA online and checked her room. But the problem, however, that the CLA online is not updated in the real time. And usually, this number don't get updated until April or May. So when Mary logged in January, she thought she could still contribute $20,000, where in fact, she could only do $6,000. Therefore, CLA sent her a letter and also with a fine as well too. And later in the year, they also denied Mary's appeal. Now, Mary was pissed and took the matter to court. So how did it go? When it went to court, the judge acknowledged the taxpayer's argument of making a reasonable error, but ultimately concluded that the CLA's decision not to waive the penalty tax was reasonable. The judge stated that under the Canadian tax system, Mary are responsible for understanding their tax free saving accounts and the limits. The judge's decisions upheld the penalty tax. This case serves as a very important reminder for all of us to be diligent when managing our tax free saving contribution. The Canadian tax systems rely on us to understand and comply with the Income Tax Act. Again, always double check with your tax free saving contribution limit and be cautious when relying on the CLA My Account sections as the information displayed may not be updated in real time. The last case is about John finding himself in a challenging situation after over contributing to his tax free saving in both 2018 and 2019, resulting in penalties. So, how did that happen? Back in 2018, John had $42,500 of tax free saving room available, so he maxed out the room. And in mid 2018, he took out some money from his tax free saving for his project. The project didn't go through, so he contributed back to the tax free saving. Guess what? Because he already maxed out his contribution in that year, any additional deposit would consider over contribution regardless if you took out the money or not. The room doesn't reset until the following year. And the same thing happened in 2019. John made another $6,000 contribution to his tax free savings, which further increased the over contribution. So the CLA said, that's it, we're gonna penalize you, and John takes the matter to the federal court as well. And as expected, the court agrees with the CLA decisions and John needs to pay the fine right away. This case serves another reminder that it's crucial to understand your tax free saving contribution limits and to monitor your contributions carefully. So what can you learn from these five examples? 1. Don't do frequent trading. 2. CLA online is not updated in real time. 3. Be mindful if you're going to withdraw and deposit in the same year. 4. Pick an investment that is widely acknowledged. And lastly, don't try to outsmart the CLA, because 99% of the time, you can't. And for the remaining 1%, CLA will always find ways to get you back. So to avoid costly penalties and legal battles, be proactive in understanding your tax free saving contribution limits and track down your contribution. A little extra effort now can save you time, money, and stresses in the long run. Alright, if you'd like me to go over more case studies like this, please give me a thumbs up and make a comment. This is Thomas, thanks so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.